So when I turn this, if the phone calls. see a little while, and of course, uh, the McHenry's came, and, and they just jumped in the choir. I'm excited. So if you want to join the choir, you can. Am I right about that? Can they come yes. in? Yes. Man, come on up. Man, listen. Uh, what's that? What did you say, Jane? I don't know why not, Jane. I've always wanted to sing a solo. I know. And, and nobody's ever asked you. No. You know, David, is there a reason for that? Okay. Uh, uh, hey, so we're glad you're here, really are, uh, this, we've got such good reason to be here this morning, and uh, so I want to lead us in a prayer, turn it over to Dave, and, uh, and we'll go from there, but it's, delight, it's a delight to see you, so let's pray together, okay? Father, we join together here, and you make us one because of our, our belief in Christ, uh, and we recognize him as to be the only hope. Uh, for humanity, um, and he is the one who made the worlds, and he's the one who came and, uh, and gave his life for us. Wow, how ironic is that? Thank you, Father. Bless this church in every way. Uh, Father, I thank you for these that are singing I, uh, in this choir. I thank you for those that have come this morning, and we've come uh, because we believe. And so I pray that you'll be the teacher here today and you'll, uh, you'll minister to your people. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And as Don said, good morning, happy Easter. Glad that you're here. We had a really big crowd in the first service, had a lot in Sunday school, and it sure is nice. Yes. Everybody looked so nice. The children were all dressed up, really nice. So we, we enjoyed having that. Uh, if you're watching with us on television, we want you to know we're glad that you're watching. But we would love to have you in person. So yeah. please make every effort to come join us live in person. If not, we're so glad that you can tune in and watch us via the TV. So Christ the Lord is risen today. We will sing all four verses for several reasons. One, because it's a great hymn that needs to be sung. All four verses tie together. Another reason is because we're going to decorate this cross. We have a lot of flowers that you can't see right now. But Piled all down here, azalea, azalea cuttings, different things. And if there are any children that want to come up and help with this, they can do that. But during this hymn, we'll decorate the cross and the Gilbert cross will come to life to signify that Christ the Lord has risen today. Let's all stand hymn number 270.
Sunday morning, they took the ointments to the tomb and found that the huge stone covering the entrance had been rolled aside. They went in, but the Lord Jesus' body was gone. They stood there puzzled, trying to think what could have happened to it. Suddenly, two men appeared before them, glowed in the shiny robe, so bright that their eyes were dazzled. The women were terrified and bowed low before them. Then the men asked, Why are you looking in a tomb for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He's come back to life again. Don't you remember what he told you back in Galilee? That the Messiah must be betrayed into the power of evil men and be crucified and then he would rise again on the third day. They remembered and, and rushed right. to Jerusalem to tell his disciples and everyone else what had happened. Looking at that cross that was pretty barren to begin with, look at it now. It's transformed just as Jesus Christ has risen. The cross is transformed to signify that. Christ arose in number 273. Followed by number 277. Stay seated on the first one. I'll stand you up for He is Lord, and then we'll go into our morning prayer. <laughs> Thank you. 
marveled each Easter on the, the morning of Easter of how those, the faith of those two ladies that went to the tomb. You know, when they went to the tomb, they thought the soldiers would be there to keep them out. But the soldiers, as we know, were scared and ran off. They also thought they were going to have to get that stone out of the way, a heavy stone. But it was rolled away. And they went in, and there was no body that they were going to prepare. They came out, and the angels told them, He is alive. He has risen. Salvation is ours. And I could imagine that they were perplexed. They were excited. They did everything to run as fast as they could back to the disciples to let them know what had happened. Oh, what a great plan God has had all along. Now, Thursday night, we had a service here, Monday, Thursday, that depicts all that we're doing here. It was a wonderful service. Next year, please plan on being here with us. It's a great service. And in it, we refreshed our memory of what Jesus said. And he said, do this in remembrance of me, as is shown right before us. They had the Passover meal. They broke bread. And he blessed it. And he said, eat this. This represents my body which will be broken for you. And then after the meal, they poured the wine. And he blessed it. And he says, drink this. This represents my blood, which will wash away your sins.
I, I can't imagine anybody having any better music than that in, uh, in any church in this town. I'm serious. Wow. Beautiful. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, we talk about something this morning that's bigger than everybody here in this room. Um, sometimes we, you know, go through uh, our days and weeks and we're, we don't give it much thought. So forgive us for that. Um, but Father, this is that day that we can realize how significant this was. I pray that you'll uh, help us. Help us. Be the teacher. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it is true that he came to give hope to the hopeless and to replace sorrow with joy. It's true that he did. And for some of you, um, you look at your life and you're saying, well, you know, I don't really feel hopeless. Well, hey, uh, I think that's marvelous. I think that's exciting. Um, but it wouldn't take you very long uh, to walk around your neighborhoods it wouldn't take you very long to see people that do feel hopeless. And you have that message. You see, I've seen people who, uh, I've seen people who were uh, affected by this gospel. Whose lives were radically changed. Who used to be one way, perhaps they used to be you know, one of the most impatient people in their homes or in their work or wherever they were. And they became patient because of the power of the gospel. Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1 was, he said, I mean, I pray that you would, that you would experience the power of the gospel, that you would experience the power of the resurrection, that you would experience it. And I've seen people change. I've seen people that were troubled. I've seen people that were uh, immoral. I've seen people that were addicted to various things that consumed their lives, affected the people around them. But because of the resurrection, because of the power of God, uh, it was manifest in their life and they became free. I love the passage that we are about to read. Um, it's, it's one of those that I, I am not exaggerating when I say for the last 20 or 30 years, my Saturdays are really marvelous days. Because I imagine, and I can't even help it, I can't help it, but I'm going through my day on Saturday, and I imagine this story is one of those that, that draws me there, to think what in the world they must have been thinking, what, what sorrow they must have been experiencing, and because I know the outcome, it's just such a peaceful day for me. Because many of you, myself included, have gone through days that seemed like the, the, the future was hopeless. It seemed like, the, like life would never be the same again. And they experienced that. You see, they had hoped. And their hopes were dashed. They had hoped that Jesus came to set up his kingdom. That's why John and, uh, it was, uh, uh, John and uh, Peter who came to Jesus and said, Hey, can we sit with you on your throne? Uh, can we, can we sit on either side of your throne? And Jesus, boy, he just uh, kind of let them know. He taught them a thing or two. He said, look, guys, we don't want to think like the world. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, they had hoped. And they were sorrowful. And they didn't have joy. And, and, and their hopes were absolutely 
dashed in their lives. And Peter came back in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. He says, uh, he says you have been given a living hope uh, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so a lot of times you and I, but it's, real, it's rather easy because you and I are, we have a proclivity to uh, uh, not recognizing the significance of things around us. Sometimes we don't realize, for example, the significance of the relationships that we're in. Sometimes we don't realize the significance of, of what, what happened to us when we, when we received Christ and then the, the significance of when we back, got baptized. And we, we, we sort of lose that. So we have proclivity to, to uh, forgetting. And so I'm hoping that through are remembering here today that we realize that there is a power available to you to live differently than the world lives, but live in such a way that others may even want what you have. They may even want the kind of life that you have. He gave us a living hope. In other words, it's one of those things that, that becomes alive within us where, where, where by the way, the word hope means, uh, and it, it means confident anticipation. There are many that look toward the future and they're, they're really not looking forward to it, but yet the Bible teaches us that, we, that he wants us to. He came, what, 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 did, what did the angels say when they came, when Jesus came and was born? Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth among men. Joy to the world, he said. That was his intention. But we have a, we have a world that, 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 that has forgotten. We have a world that, that, that does not look to God. You see, the, the, the wars that are going on, the Bible says, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the struggles that we have in the world, the struggles that we have are a result of no peace. There's no peace. And whenever there's no peace here, it's going to be lived out. We have no other choice. You can go down to the, the streets of Chicago or Detroit or Memphis or sometimes Jonesboro, and we see the, the, the danger that people are in, and these young people so often are young people they, they, they have no hope. But you see, you do. You have a hope. And you and I have something to give to others. I want us to read this passage, and I'm trying to get to it, but I, I just love how Jesus met these guys right where they were. He met them right where they were. Uh, some of them struggled. The Bible says that even those that those disciples, it says in Matthew 28, it says that they uh, uh, that they uh, worshipped him, but some of them doubted. You see, there might be some here in this room who still kind of struggle just a little bit with a little bit of doubt. You're still trying to grasp a hold of this stuff. These guys had some struggles that are similar to you. And, and, and what's so beautiful is, is that, that he doesn't rebuke them. He, he challenges them, but he, man, he just meets them right where they are. Remember, remember Thomas? He was one of the doubters. Remember Jesus said, hey, you know, touch, you know, feel my side. Look at my hands, he said. He, uh, he met them where they were. And he taught them. I want you to see this because really this could be any one of us uh, in our lives, walking through our life and kind of confused and kind of we're, we're, we're perplexed in certain things in our life. We're perplexed by it. And so, uh, so they're, they're, we're going to watch this. And what's interesting is, is that Jesus comes alongside them and he hides their eyes in the sense that they couldn't see see him, that it was, that it was him. And, and, and he walks with them and he talks with them about their struggle. And I just need you to understand that there's a beautiful picture here for you and for me, is that you do struggle and I struggle. Sometimes things run through my mind and, and it's so good when we, when, when we just, when we 
give that struggle to him. Why? Because he's close. We see this in the passage that when they were struggling, what happened? He came to them. We find the same thing in the scriptures. He, in Psalm 147.3, it says that, that, he's, that he, he's close to the brokenhearted and he heals their wounds. We see this over and over in the scriptures. Let's begin reading in verse 13. It's a long story, um, but it's worth our reading this morning. And, and uh, we'll be fine on time. Now behold... Two of them were traveling that same day to the village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were strained, so they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? When the one whose name is Cleopas, by the way, we don't know anything about him, answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a mighty prophet in deed and word before God and all of the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, <clears throat> besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. And when they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And then he said to them, O oh, foolish one, and slow of heart to believe in all the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his, into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would, would have gone on farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. He went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread and blessed them and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. They told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace be to you. And they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do you, why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, have you any, have any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and he ate it in their presence. 
And he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. He opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ, the Messiah, to suffer and arise from the dead. and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. He led them out as far as Bethany. He lifted up his hand. Blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. You know, there have been men in past ages that have sought to disprove. Uh, the resurrection. But many men that have sought to do that over the years, and when they got serious and really tried to disprove it, such as Lee Strobel, who was a, a journalist for, uh, I believe it was the Chicago Tribune, his wife had become a believer and he was kind of irritated by it. But she continued to love the Lord and to pray for him. So he set out to disprove it as a journalist, as a well-educated journalist. His conclusion was that indeed Jesus had been raised from the grave. He said he found more evidence that Jesus had lived, died, and rose than he could find that George Washington was your first president. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I can name others. C.S. Lewis, one of the great writers, one of the great intelligent men, of, men of, uh, of, of this last century. He himself, brilliant man, uh, uh, sought and believed, did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And when he set out to find out, he came to the conclusion that in fact Jesus rose from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, there is a power available to you today. You see, Paul prayed that that you would know, that I would know the power of the resurrection in our lives. You see, oh, slow to believe sometimes you and I are. I love reading about things like this that we just read. I, I love the fact that, uh, uh, that, uh, that Jesus ate with them. That's one of the evidences that I have that we're going to eat when we're in heaven. I'm looking forward to eating in heaven. You know, we're going to be sitting around a table I don't know how long that table's going to be, but we're going to be sitting around a table. There's going to be a wedding feast. Did you know that? The Bible talks about that in Revelation. I'm just telling you, we're going to have some good food, man. And, uh, and uh, there's going to be a lot of great fellowship when we're in heaven together. Great fellowship. Better than you and I have ever thought of it. You see, that's what he wants to bring to you and me. He wants to bring us to a place where we anticipate going home rather than dreading it. He wants to bring us to a place where we can't wait because the word hope, he, kind of, he gave us in 1 Peter 1, 3, he gave us a living hope. He gave us a living hope that, uh, that be, through the resurrection of the dead. And so that's the way I want to live. In fact, I would say to you that God wants to bring you to a place where your life is better than your dreams. And what you had hoped for, that it's better. You see, I look at my life, and I, I'm, to you, you and I are all the same. We have our struggles here, and we have our struggles here. We all have them. Things that, that sometimes grab a hold of our mind. We all have them, but I'll be honest with you. You and I have a great life. I have a great life. And I'll tell you how. Because, one, as I go in and, out of, in and out of hospital rooms and I look at myself and I go, i got a great life, but i got to go a whole lot farther than that. you got your health, you're doing pretty, 
darn good. But I want you to know that because of the resurrection, I have God walking with me everywhere I go. People will ask me often with people I work with, how's your day? It goes, going great. And they go, I did, before I can even answer, I know what you're going to say. Because it is. Because of his presence. Because of his presence. You see, I'll tell you where, who he's really close to at this moment right now, where, where you could sense it if you wanted to, are the people that feel hopeless. He's right there. Those of you that, that um, are struggling with one thing or another in your life, he's right there. He's right there. And he cares about that. You see, that's why Peter said, hey, hey guys, what he says in chapter 5, verse 7, in verse Peter, he says, hey, cast your care on him because he cares for you. You see, because he cares for you. God is emotionally connected to you. He cares about what's going on in your life right now. And so the thoughts that I have, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to close here. Can you believe that? I haven't even really got to my points yet, but I'm going to give them to you real fast. Are you ready? The truths that, that, that stand out here more than any other is, number one, is that God is close to you. That's the first thing that I see in the passage. These guys were wrestling with something, and Jesus was right there. That's number one. Number two, what I see in the passage, oh so clear, is this. God is so kind that he was, he was, uh, he unveiled their eyes so they could see the greatest truths in all the world. I want to say that again. God was so kind that he unveiled the greatest truths in all of the world to them. That Christ had to suffer in order that you could have life. He came to get rid of your sins because he wanted you and me to be with him forever. Two things. I'm going to get to my third right now. Watch this. But let me just repeat them. Number one, God is close to you. He is near you. Especially those of you that are struggling with one thing or another. It's probably all of us. But the second thing is, is that he's so kind that if you want to know the truth, he's going to show you the truth. John 7, 17. He that wants to know the will of God will know the will of God, the Bible says. Isn't that great? The third and final thought I have for you is God wants to strengthen you. I, I need you to hear this. If you don't hear anything else this morning, it would be this. God wants to strengthen you in such a way that you have a hope for the future and you have a joy that you cannot deny, that you cannot explain. Now listen to me. Because here's what he did. Here's what he did. This is how he strengthened them. You'll bring up that one verse for me, Brent, in, uh, in uh, Romans 15, 13. That's the last verse, and we're going to close. But watch this. Here's what Jesus did. He brought to them the scriptures. And what did the scriptures say? They talked about him. You want to, listen, you want to have a sense of assurance about your future? Then get to know him. You know why? Because then you'll figure out that he really does love you. The more you get to know him, the more you know that of his interest in you. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen as you get to know him. And that's what happened to these disciples. I love this. Now may the God of hope my prayer for you, God's prayer for you. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that good? God will bring hope alive in you and you will abound in Father, uh, boy, you are so kind to show us stories like this. For those that are downcast, you're right there. For those that, that want to know the truth, you are right there. And Father, the way we become strengthened 
is nothing less than the words of God. Thank you. Thank you. Strengthen us in our hope. Give us your peace and your joy that's not based on circumstances, but simply the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. If there's someone here who can say, you know, Don, I need this Jesus in my life. I'd love to pray with you. Just come on and pray with me. But here's this cool thing. You ready? You don't need me. You get to talk to him all by yourself. But I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to pray with you if you want to. Would you stand and we're going to sing He Lives. We're going to stand and sing together He Lives. I was dead and behold I'm alive forever and ever. We'll stand and we'll sing 269. <laughs> Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. And let me just say happy Easter. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the meaning. And Father, may every day be lived as the resurrection. Now, Father, go with us as we leave. Father, bless this food for the nourishment of our bodies. Thank you for the hands that prepared it all. And Lord, we just pray that you bring us all back together again. Now, give us all peace, Father. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Happy Easter.